Continuing the excerpts from How to Rear a Child. Whenever there is a master in the world, a star is there. A pole star is there. Like a pole star, he is there to give direction to all those weary travelers along the inward path. And those who are wise, they start feeling it, they start moving towards this pull of the pole star. Wherever that master is, a star shines in the sky like a pole star. And those who are sensitive, those who have any inner search to see, and find they immediately become aware of the star and start moving from thousands and thousands of miles away they start moving and from thousands and thousands of miles away they start moving and they come to the place where the master is the excerpt from How to Rear a Child Unconditional Growth As soon as the child is born, the society starts closing in on the child and starts making myriad boundaries. All such boundaries are conditionings. Then one forgets one's original face Slowly and slowly one becomes identified with all that has been said, told, repeated again and again. This is a kind of hypnosis that is being practiced on every child in the name of child rearing. Man is born unconditional as freedom. He comes just as an open sky with no clouds, boundaries, and any objectives. Certainly he has no definitions, Hindu, Christian, Jew, Muslim, or communist. He is just pure existence, emptiness. But immediately as soon as the child is born, the society closes in on the child and starts making myriad boundaries. All such boundaries are conditioning and then slowly and slowly you are identified with all that has been told, repeated again and again. This is the kind of hypnosis that is being practiced on every child. It is a violation of the most fundamental human right. However, it seems very difficult to know. It is a violation of the most fundamental human right. However, it seems very difficult to know how to fight it because children themselves cannot fight with it. Children's liberation is needed. It is the greatest need in the world because no other slavery is as deep, dangerous and as destructive. The child is not allowed to know his self, rather the society creates a false self that he is this and that. Thus he continues to behave this way. The society gives ideals, ideas, and very soon the child becomes accustomed to the fact that he is a Christian or he is a man or he has to behave in a manly way that he should not cry because this is girlish. The girl starts behaving in a feminine way. She learns that she should not climb the trees because that is boyish. Slowly and slowly new boundaries start surfacing and they go on becoming narrower. Such narrowness 
everyone feels suffocated with and everybody hankers deep down to be free. That is the situation. Everybody is suffocated and hankers deep down to be free. But there is no way to know how to be free. It seems that the walls that surrounded one are really very powerful, strong and invisible. And people live in this kind of imprisonment for their whole life. They live in a prison and they die in a prison. Never having known what life is, what life is meant to be, never knowing the glory and the grandeur of the existence. Buddha had called this state Shankaro, the conditioned state of mind. The entire process of meditation implies unconditioning and deprogramming the mind so that those invisible walls are removed. What the parents, the society, the priests and the politicians have done has to be undone by the master. So the master is basically against the society. If the society poisons Socrates, it is not accidental. If it kills Jesus or Al-Hilad Mansur, it is quite logical. How can this process of deprogramming begin? We spoke that child is the unconditional growth. Initiation, the deprogramming. Another excerpt from How to Rear a Child. Initiation is the process of deprogramming. With initiation, the seeker becomes more and more aware and goes on dropping all adjectives and all identities. In the beginning, it is painful because you will feel confused. You will not know who you are because all that you have known about yourself will start disappearing. You will be in a kind of chaos. To begin the process of inward journey, the master initiates the individual seeker. With initiation, the seeker comes within the energy field of the master. With this, slowly and slowly, the process of deprogramming the mind begins. The seeker becomes more and more aware and goes on dropping all that has been conditioned and had been his identity so far. In the beginning it is painful because you feel confused. Something that you have known, something that has given you security is being dropped. You will not know who you are because you have known about yourself and start because all that you have known about yourself will start disappearing and you will be in a state of chaos and that is where courage is needed. If one can go on dropping all the boundaries, the definitions, all that has been told and remains as borrowed and has come from outside, one day suddenly one is free. In that freedom is joy. You can call that freedom God or bliss or anything. The work of a master consists of destroying your conditionings. Certainly it is a painful process, but the end result is tremendously beautiful. It is arduous, but when one has reached to the top for the first time, one starts being really alive. And that aliveness as a master, I would like to give it to you. And that aliveness as a master 
I would like to share with you the last excerpt in this series, How to Rear a Child, the Biorhythm Cycles. Biorhythm Cycles. No one understands why one is happy one day and next day unhappy. Happiness and unhappiness is the outcome of response to people, circumstances and situations that keep on changing each moment. Happiness is your conscious choice and understanding of the cosmic phenomena. Normal human life is just ordinary cycles of misery and happiness. No one understands why one is happy one moment and next moment unhappy. Happiness and unhappiness is the outcome of responses to people, circumstances and situations. These keep on changing every moment. Happiness is your conscious choice and understanding of the cosmic phenomena. Therefore, I do not see that there is really any cause for it. One thing you have to understand about it is that human mind functions in a cycle. There are three basic cycles in human existence. The first cycle is physical cycle. It takes 23 days to complete and it affects a broad range of physical factors including resistance to disease, strength, conditioning and other basic body functions and the sensation of physical well-being. The second cycle is emotional. It takes 28 days to complete just as it takes 28 days in the feminine body for the menstruation to come. Just now science is becoming alert that even a man has a kind of monthly period and that after each 28 days it happens. The feminine period is visible in physical. Man's period is not visible or physical. Instead it is more psychological and emotional but it happens. The emotional cycle governs creativity, sensitivity, mental health, mood, perception of the world and us. When a woman is in the period for three, four, five days, she is miserable, sad, negative, dull, dead, feeling very low, jumpy and shaken. But woman becomes accustomed to it because it is so visible. By and by they learn that it has to be so and they are not so miserable. It is an every month thing so, and so visible so things settle. But man's problem is more difficult. The period is there as invisible and you do not know where it comes from and where it goes. Because of this menstruation period, you suffer for three, four days. Understanding of biorhythm cycles will be very helpful. For you. The second cycle is a 28 day cycle in the body. The cycle follows the moon. So whenever there is moon, you will be happier and when there is no moon you will be relatively less happy and then finally there is the third cycle the third cycle is the intellectual one it takes place over a 33 day period it regulates memory alertness receptivity to knowledge and the logical and analytical functions. The first half of each period is positive and the second half negative. Sometimes you have a period in negative phase 
and the other in the positive and vice versa. When all the three cycles are in positive phase, peaks of joy and ecstasy happens. And when all the three are in negative, one lives in hell. Heaven means all the three are in positive and hell is the other end. And to be free of both is nirvana, moksha or absolute freedom. Such is the situation with everyone. Therefore, it is nothing to do with you alone or with any specific cause. These are just excuses. Therefore, all illness and headache are just an excuse. If there is no illness, then you would have found something else. You have just to understand these phases and you have to be little more watchful. The best way is keeping a diary about these negative phases. Within 3-4 months, you will be able to make your chart and then you can predict that next Monday you are going to be in a bad mood and then be alert. This is an insight aspect of astrology and more accurate. In ancient days, yogis used to make such charts and science of biorhythm was well known and practiced in yoga and Sufi schools. And these charts were very helpful because if you know that for the first week of every month you become very negative, then a few things can be avoided. In that first week, do not do anything for which you can repent later on. In that first week, do not do anything for which you have to repent later on. Do not fight or get angry. The people who are really following those charts will not move out of their rooms. In ancient times, in India, woman is in menstruation. She was not allowed to interact with anyone. But this was used as a compulsion, not out of the free will. But if you understand your biorhythm chart, you realize that in the first week of every month, you are negative. Then, in that first week, do not do anything for which you can repent later on. This is now happening to you consciously. Do not fight or get angry. The person who are really following those charts will not move out of their rooms. They will not do anything for these seven or four or three days because whatsoever they do will be wrong. And then you know when your positive mood comes. That is the time to relate, to go to people, to meet and nothing will go wrong. You will be in a different state altogether. So start keeping a diary from tomorrow morning and once you have understood this, you can prepare the children as well. And by diary, I do not mean that you have to write all kind of details. Instead maintain just the diary of negative and positive moods morning afternoon, evening and night four times. Each day make note of how you were feeling for three months and then make a chart. Just look at the chart when you are in positive moments. Those are the moments when you should meditate, love, sing, dance, go swimming, relate to people or do something creative and you will be much benefited because suddenly God is available in those moments and you will be much benefited because suddenly God is available in those moments you are very close when you are in a negative phase 
then do not do anything unnecessary instead be aware of it and in that awareness alone you will start transcending nothing is really a problem and if you are a moon type then you have to be very watchful about the moon you can become very excited use that excitement to the moon can drive you mad hence the word lunatic is there it means moon struck from lunar the lunatic many people go mad on the full moon night many people commit suicide and murder on full moon night and many have become enlightened also on full moon night it depends on the use of the energy that is released creatively or destructively there is tremendous energy released man is is still a part of the ocean and just as the moon affects the ocean it affects man too 80% you are ocean water and have the same chemicals saltishness and everything else as well with 80% ocean water you are bound to be affected by the moon if you do not use it rightly it can become destructive for example if it in full moon night you cannot sleep then it is better not to sleep why not sing play dance and why bother about sleeping it is not the night to sleep then verily it is the night to dance and celebrate next day when you are totally exhausted then you can go to sleep if you try to sleep and you cannot sleep then it becomes misery and when people cannot fall asleep they try to force sleep and they remain miserable when you are not feeling sleepy do something do something creative there are certain primitive tribes in india who will never sleep on full moon night one is not meant to sleep they will dance the whole night certainly they will dance like crazy and next day will be a holiday their holidays are according to the moon not according to the sun the indian astrological system is based on the lunar calendar according to the moon and the western astrological chart is based on the sun they do not have sundays when the full moon has come the next day is a holiday then everybody has to sleep the whole community will sleep because the whole night they will drink dance and celebrate and it will be an all the of joy and my own observation is that people can reach to the highest peak of joy on the full moon night buddha got enlightened on full moon night they are at the lowest ebb on the full moon night so this is all for the excerpts from how to rear a child a book of 125 plus pages has been given to you in the audio form ravindranath says the sea surges up with laughter and pale gleams the smile of the sea beach death dealing waves sing meaningless ballads to the children even like mothers while rocking her baby's cradle the sea plays with the children and pale gleams the smile of the sea beach 
on the seashore of endless worlds children meet tempest roam in the pathless sky ships are wrecked in trackless water death is abroad and children play on the seashore of endless worlds is the great meeting of children this is a quote from geeta anjali children are living beings more living than grown up people who have built shells of habit around themselves therefore it is absolutely necessary for their mental health and development that they should not have mere schools for their lessons but a world whose guiding spirit is personal love only this much for the excerpts from how to wear a child